Hello and welcome to this video on local maxima in latent class and latent profile analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually talk about an analysis in the m software and on Thursdays I address more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, latent class modeling and multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to address an issue that many beginners who start with latent class analysis or latent profile analysis are not aware of, and that's the issue of so-called local maxima. Local maxima can cause you a lot of trouble when you're analyzing latent class models, and when you're new to this topic, then you may not even realize that this is a true threat to the validity of your findings and you may run into something that is not a valid set of results. So first of all, what are local maxima? For that, we need to first um, realize that when we analyze latent class analysis or latent profile analysis in software like for example M plus or latent gold, then what these programs do by default is they use maximum likelihood uh, estimation to obtain the parameter estimates and fit statistics of latent class and latent profile models as well as other types of mixture models. And so when we use maximum likelihood estimation, the goal is to maximize the likelihood of our observed data given the set of model parameters. And when we use maximum likelihood estimation for many types of analyses such as for example factor analysis or structural equation modeling where those techniques are also used, then um, typically we have a clear maximum of the likelihood that we can find as long as we have good starting values or reasonable starting values, let's say for our parameter estimates and as long as the model is not too complicated in some way, as long as there are not odd issues with our data, typically this works just fine that we use a set of, for example, random starting values in the software behind the scenes and then um, the, the likelihood of the data under the model gets maximized in an iterative process by the program until we reach a stop criterion, some kind of um, optimization criterion, the number of iterations and or the parameter change between subsequent iterations. So say when the change in the estimated parameters is sufficiently marginal between subsequent iterations then at some point we'll say okay we have convergence to a final solution and that's our optimum. This uh, com comprises or this um, contains the best possible parameter estimates and and the right fit statistics. Now, this is the case when we have, for example, factor models and structural equation models, then typically there's no problem. There's a single maximum of the likelihood function that we can typically easily reach with many standard models. With latent class analysis and latent profile analysis, things are a bit different because those types of analyses tend to be more difficult in terms of obtaining or finding the true optimum or true maximum of the likelihood function and there may be there may be multiple maxima some of which we call local maxima meaning they are seemingly uh, and or they could be confused with the true maximum of the likelihood function but they're only a local maxim maximum you can imagine that a little bit like as if you were climbing a mountain in the dark and you're climbing a mountain that has multiple peaks where you want to reach the true maximum peak so say the global maximum but um, in the dark you can't really see um, what's in front of you so say you might reach a top and then after that top you might have to go down again before reaching the true maximum or the the truly the largest peak 
of that mountain and it may not occur to you because it's dark and so you you're reaching a peak but that's not the real peak of the mountain that's just so say an intermediate peak and you have to go down a little bit again and then up again and so that's kind of like what we can encounter with latent class models and mixture distribution models in general so any kind of model where we're trying to find hidden groups latent groups such as latent class analysis, latent profile analysis, facts, factor mixture modeling, and other types of mixture analyses, we can run into a local peak, so to say, of the likelihood function. And the problem with that is that the parameter estimates that are associated with a local maximum may not be optimal, and they may be far away from the true maximum likelihood parameter estimates that really maximize the likelihood function. And so that's, this means that you might end up with biased parameter estimates if you select a local maximum solution. And also the fit statistics may also be incorrect. So basically, in simple terms, a local maximum is a problem because it can be associated with an invalid solution. You might find the wrong classes, the wrong class sizes, the wrong fit statistics, so the whole analysis may be compromised. And this is why we have to care about local maxima. We want to find the true optimum of the likelihood function. Now, how can you avoid local maxima in latent class and latent profile modeling? First of all, one thing to avoid, so to say, is a model that has many classes, because this is a problem that occurs primarily when you have a latent class or latent profile model that has too many classes, or in general, we could say that has many classes. So local maxima occur more frequently when you have, let's say, more than four or five classes. Now, this doesn't mean that you could never have a model with six or seven classes. Sometimes that's what we have to have to assume because that's what reality looks like. However, you need to be cautious, especially when you have models with many latent classes, let's say more than four. This is where we really have to be vigilant. And now how can we do that? How can we avoid local maxima when we need to assume a larger number of classes? And so one safeguard against running into a local maximum solution is to run many different sets of starting values rather than just a single set of starting values when we start our analysis. And many programs for latent class and latent profile analysis such as M plus do this automatically. So M plus, for example, will automatically use multiple sets of starting values, even if you say nothing. There's a default setting and M plus will automatically use multiple sets of starting values to help you protect against local maxima a little bit. However, the default settings for multiple sets of starting values may not be sufficient. So there may be, for example, only 20 sets of starting values that are being used and they all might run into a local maximum. Maximum. And so um, really a um, way to avoid this or at least to check for it is to run more, for example, 100. So you could run maybe 100 sets of starting values and then compare the log likelihood values for those different sets of starting values. And then if multiple ones of them converge to the same solution, then you can be relatively confident that the solution is clearly identified as the true optimum of the likelihood function. So really the key is to run multiple sets of starting values and then compare the overall log likelihood values, maybe rerun again with more starting values to see if you can still replicate the best log likelihood value and then you can be relatively sure. Now if you find that you run with multiple sets of starting values and you increase the number of starting values and you still find different log likelihood values for different runs, then it's, it may be a sign that the solution is not well defined for the data, that it's not identified, that you have too many classes or that the model otherwise is not a good fit with the data. And so as I said before, this is a problem that primarily tends to be exacerbated when you have many classes. So try to avoid, if possible, models that have too many classes because those are more prone to local maxima and also they are more difficult to present and to 
explain to your audience when you have 12 classes you spend a lot of pages in your paper explaining what all those 12 classes are and they may not all be unique the more classes you have the higher the likelihood that maybe you're capitalizing on chance that those are artifacts and so try to keep your model as small and parsimonious as possible then you can also avoid many of those kinds of problems. Another thing that you can do to avoid local maxima is to um, select a sufficient number of initial estimation stage iterations. So having or typically in programs like M plus the um, estimation of latent class and latent profile models is happens in stages where the starting value sets are sequentially tested where maybe you start with 500 sets of starting values let's say in the first stage and then M plus uses a certain number of iterations let's say 50 for each set of starting values and then discards after 50 iterations the starting value sets that are clearly off and only retains let's say the 50 best ones or the 100 best ones and so the the more initial stage iterations you use the better the solutions are so say or the clearer at least after the first stage and then you're already starting out with a set of starting values that are more um, appropriate for finding the global maximum than when you use only few initial stage iterations so having many starting value sets and many initial stage iterations can help protect against local maxima in latent class and latent profile analysis. Also, always be skeptical of what you find. Uh, when classes look really strange, don't feel like, yay, I discovered something that is super unusual and super exciting, but rather be skeptical. Think about, is this really, does this make sense? Especially when classes are small and they look odd. Be skeptical of your analysis. Carefully check your log likelihood values for multiple solutions so that you can be sure that the best log likelihood value can be replicated. Programs like M plus make this easy for you because they'll warn you if the best log likelihood value could not be replicated. So check the output carefully, look at everything, all the warning messages, all the potential error messages. When you find weird classes or otherwise abnormal results, be skeptical and um, take a close look at whether really what you find is trustworthy and valid. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about local maxima in latent class and latent profile analysis. I hope you can um, apply this to your own analyses in a way that you avoid these problems. Also check out my other video on how to avoid local maxima when using M+. There I show you how the concrete steps in M+, as to how you can run multiple sets of starting values and how you can check for local maxima. So check, that, check out that video as well. Don't forget to take a look at the description of this video where you find additional resources, including links to my Quantfish workshops on latent class analysis, latent profile analysis, and latent transition analysis. And also don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.